Good morning and welcome to worship here at United in Christ Digital Web Space. We are so glad that you're with us as we talk about the almost seemingly impossible charge that Jesus gives us this week of continuing to go out and carrying his message, even in the face of a sword. So, uh, we're so glad that you're with us this morning. We have a spot picked out for you right up front with Michelle. So we'll be getting started in just a few minutes after the wonderful music provided by Marilyn. Good morning and welcome to worship here at United in Christ Lutheran Church. We are so glad that you're with us this morning. I didn't give you a chance to say good morning back good morning. <laughs> so who knew that when the pastor goes away for a week, there's not a ton of announcements and not a ton of things that are scheduled the week that he's gone. So I don't have many announcements for you, but I do have a couple things for you to just mark your calendars as we look ahead into next month, which is really just a week away. <laughs> Uh, we have a Lutheran night at the park, which we will be joining our partners, or our, our, yeah, our partners and our neighbors at Milton and Christ um, as we head up to Williamsport to attend a Crossgutters game on August 6th at 4 p.m. Tickets are $6 a pop if we can get a group of 20 or more to go. I feel like that's easily doable. Who doesn't like a night out at the baseball game? Uh, the, the final sign-up for that will be July 16th. There's a sign-up sheet downstairs, and Pastor Justin very kindly also put in, if you would like to pay for your ticket through Tidely, you can just do so. There, it, there's an option in the drop-down menu. It might also have been moved up top because sometimes Tidely doesn't cooperate. So as you are uh, giving your offering today, maybe just be mindful of, how, of where that might be going. Uh, we also have um, some date. We finally set some dates for our Theology on Tap road trip. I know many of you might have been looking forward to it. This is not replacing our normal Theology on Tap that meets every other Wednesday at Rusty Rail, but this is actually in addition to, and we will be meeting on Friday, July 21st at New Trail Brewing up in Williamsport. And then on Friday, August 11th, we'll be headed to Three Beards in Sunbury. Keep your eyes out for more of the details and more of the time and the sign-up sheet as that comes up ahead. But we're excited to maybe just kind of venture beyond a little bit more of our, our normal places and try something new and different. And who knows, maybe that might be our new normal place. <laughs> Probably not. Williamsport's pretty far. <laughs> uh, and then also looking forward ahead as well, Saturday, July 15th, we'll be gathering for a time of fellowship, homemade ice cream, and s'mores with our fire and ice night put on by our social ministry. That'll be here Saturday, July 15th at 6 p.m., I believe. Uh, so join us, come out for that. Bring a camp chair, 
because uh, we'll, we'll need places to sit as we gather around the fire. I don't think I have any other announcements. Do you guys have any announcements? Yes, Ms. Sherry. Um, for those of you who signed up for donations for the crafts for our day camp, thank you very much. Um, if you can have this, your, what you signed up for here by next Sunday, um, Al and I are going to meet and start organizing everything so that we have everything ready for day camp. Um, and if you know people who still want to sign up for day camp, please have them sign up. We're, right now we're at almost 30 kids. Um, and um, we'd like to have more. Um, the more, the merrier. Um, and also, for the cross cutters game, if you have a child who is four and under, they would be free if they sit on your left. So, you know, if you're a family and you're, you're still, you know, sometimes I know finances get rough, but if you have a child four and under, they can sit on your left for free. Yes, at the Crosscutters game, children four and under can sit free if they sit on your lap. And then, as Ms. Sherry just said, uh, for anyone who has donated to the camp supplies for our day camp, thank you. And we are still looking for some of those. If you, There's still some, uh, some open slots on the sign-up sheet. And if you could have them here by July 2nd, so Sherry and Al can put them together at, to prepare for day camp, which is coming up. And if you have not signed up already, or if you know a child in your life who might be interested, Registration is still open, and we're so excited to have them. Well, that is all for now. So thank you. Thank you for being here. And for now, we'll just prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prelude. Please rise and body our in spirit as we gather at the font. <clears throat> you call us through the waters of baptism to be our authentic selves. You called us holy and set us on a path to manifest your revolution on earth. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, fountain of living water, who is the source of breath and nourishment. We praise you for the waters of life, for the streams and oceans, lakes and estuaries, and for the rain and snow that gives life to every living thing. From the waters above and the waters below, you made sacred our bond with water. Through the waters of the flood and the parting of the seas, you showed your promises to be true. 
In the waters of baptism, you claimed us and called each of us by our true name. Through baptism into the body of Christ, you transformed our lives and made us whole. Send now your spirit to move in our midst and soak us with your gifts of mercy, love, and grace. Amen. We now sing our opening hymn, number 451, We Are Baptized in Christ Jesus, found on page 4 of the bulletin. of Jesus Christ, the love, mercy, and justice of God, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not ask for a reward, except that of knowing that we do your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today's reading comes from Romans chapter 6, verses 1b through 11. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. 
We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. We know and death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please rise? Gospel according to Matthew, the tenth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the master, nor a, uh, not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough to, for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those in his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father, and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth, I have, for I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household." Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. And for any of our young folks who'd like to join me up front this morning for a special time in our playground... Good morning. Oh my gosh, your dress looks like Elsa. You have a unicorn? Good morning. Oh my goodness. Wait, you're so far away. (laughs) I have a question for you guys. Who teaches you things? Where do you learn? You learn math, but who teaches that to you? Yeah, your teacher. Who else teaches you guys things? Doctor. Doctor? Yeah, sometimes doctors teach us. Who else teaches you? Not a lot of people. Teachers and doctors. That's pretty much it. Parents, I guess you're not teaching your kids anything. <laughs> sometimes our what? Yeah, some our police officers, sometimes coaches. We have a lot of people in our lives who sometimes teach us things and we don't even know it. Oh, thank you. I try. <laughs> I try really hard. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes we learn things. Do you think you learn things from your friends? Yeah? What kind of things do you learn from your friends? Well, they tell me being kind. They tell you secrets? They tell you to be kind? Have you ever gotten in a big fight with your friend over yes. something they tried to tell you? you? Oh, your sister. You got in a fight with your friend? No. You've yes. never been in a fight with your, with your sister? Oh, my gosh. I don't have- you don't have a sister, but you have friends. Have you been, you've gotten in fights with your brothers? With your brother? Have you gotten in a fight with your sister? Yeah. Sometimes I get in fights with my sister a lot. I have two sisters. And they're wonderful most of the time. A lot of times when we were little, we fought. That's because my sister would tell me something. And I did not believe her, and she'd get really, really mad at me for that. Yeah. 
that's not fun when your sister gets really, really mad at you. And you know what we did when we got mad at each other? What? We fought. We, we didn't talk kind. to each other. We, yeah, we weren't kind to each other. You should be. You're right. We should be. But I didn't know that at five or six or seven. Sometimes. I don't even remember that when I was 15, which is older than five. <laughs> And in the story this morning, we hear kind of some really uncomfortable things from Jesus. Jesus tells us that he does not come to bring peace. He doesn't come to always be kind. You know, Jesus said he's coming and he brings? He brings a sword. What? I know. What do you think a sword is used for? For fighting. For fighting. Yeah. You know, sometimes, though, swords are used for, for, for protecting. Because Jesus... Thinking back to our first question, who do we learn from? Who teaches us? We said our parents. We said our, our, well, I said your parents. (laughs) We said our doctors, our police officers, our friends. And Jesus, we also learn from Jesus. Even I learn from Jesus, and hopefully I'm also then teaching you from Jesus. (laughs) I know, oh my gosh, you're five. Wow, we can talk about ages after worship because I want to hear about being five. I about Jesus and you Yeah, I, well, you know what? I'm still learning about Jesus. That's, a, that's not a big secret. I don't have all the answers. And sometimes, though, it feels really scary to not have the answers. And sometimes we might get in a fight with someone over it. But that's the thing. Jesus is still teaching us. And Jesus, though, is always telling us to love one another. <coughs> even if he says he's going to bring a sword, because sometimes that sword is to protect people. And it can be a little weird. Today's gospel message is a little confusing, but Jesus loves us, Jesus protects us, and Jesus is always, always teaching us. Because you know what a disciple is? You've heard that word before, right? Jesus had 12 of them that followed him around. No. No? Did he have more? Yes. He had more? You're right. He actually did have a lot more. Because guess what? We're all disciples. Did you know that? Do you know what disciple means? It means learner. It means someone who's learning. Because that's what what we're always doing. Jesus is always teaching us, and we're always learning. And it doesn't always make sense. Sometimes you have to ask for help from someone else. Sometimes we might get mad or confused when we learn something that doesn't make sense. But that's okay, because remember, Jesus loves us, and Jesus teaches us. So can we do a couple things before we go back to our seat? Pray. Pray. Get candy. Candy. Dip your hands in the water. And, yeah, and our coloring sheets. Which you guys can keep giving us for offering, because you see our wall downstairs. It's getting pretty big, but we need some more pictures. All right, so let's pray really quick. Well, we're going to... Bow our heads, fold our hands. I almost said bow our hands. Still learning. Dear Jesus, we thank you every day for always teaching us and for always protecting us. Sometimes, though your lessons don't always make sense, we know that you are with us, offering your insight, offering your wisdom, and helping us to learn more and more about you each and every day. Help us to remember that sometimes the sword means protection and not always something to fear. Help us to remember that you are caring for us and that you are with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get some candy and some pictures. Oh, and I'm not going to stop on my alb. And while you're looking, when you go back to your seat, or you can stay up front in the playground if that's up to you. But who are some people you learn from? Think about that. I know we talked about that, but maybe you could draw a doctor. Or... Who are people who help us when we need it? And who are people we can help? Because that's what Jesus teaches us to do. I don't know why do you have to. All right, excuse me. Hi. You could sit there all sermon if you want. Heck, if I could sit on the floor, I think I would. (laughs) What? What a hard text. Like, I'm, I'm really glad that Father's Day was last week. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine trying to preach this text on Father's Day or on Mother's Day? 
a day to celebrate and honor your parents or parent-like figures in our lives, and you get met with the words, oh yeah, you go and get met with the words, I already turned the page, but you get met with the words, son will turn against father and daughter will turn against mother. I mean, come on. Jesus is not taking it easy on families in today's gospel. Jesus really isn't taking it easy on anyone this morning. What we've just heard is weird, it's uncomfortable, and it feels really counter to how we often talk about and experience Jesus. I mean, Jesus point blank says, I have not come to bring peace, but the sword. But just before that, he actually does offer a little bit of reassurance that every single hair on one's head is counted and known by God. And while this text is a little uncomfortable, I think there are a few key things that we could think about that offers insight on why Matthew is writing these things. Today's text is a direct continuation of last week's. Last week where Jesus is charging his disciples to go out and proclaim the good news and to heal all of those in the house of Israel. And to take nothing and to accept nothing in return for that work. And while you are doing these things, this is today's, Know that there will be many people who disagree with you, might try to harm you, and those people might even be your family. And perhaps this is not the most reassuring thing at face value. But in fact, it's a call to action, and it's a call to ministry. The Gospel of Matthew is primarily written for a Jesus-following Jewish audience. These people who believe in and follow Jesus have found themselves now in conflict with other Jews. In their efforts to share the good news of Jesus, they've been kicked out of their synagogues. They have faced conflict within their own family. They've even been threatened with death. And yet they're told in the face of their mission that they are to hold firm in spite of this discouragement and the threat of loss of life. Jesus tells us he's not, well, Jesus is not coming to create strife. He tells us otherwise, but he's not. He knows that his mission and ministry is counterculture to the day, and that it would create tension for his disciples and any of those who believed in him. Jesus is not asking for a family to go against one another, but he is keenly aware of how his work and his actions can set himself in opposition to them. It's not in Matthew's text or at least not today, but in a different part of Mark, where Jesus uh, is against his very own mother. Jesus knows about being in conflict with family over your beliefs. And I wonder how then those early disciples still found the courage to go and do exactly as Jesus asked. And how would we find the courage to stand against someone we love because of our own values? It doesn't sound easy. It doesn't even sound just a little difficult. And in the wake of this larger narrative, it poses the question of what does it mean then to be a disciple? And as I reminded our kids, and as I was reminded really in my prep for the sermon, disciple means learner. Disciple is not someone who's got it all figured out following Jesus. Disciple is someone who is still learning, who's following the way of Jesus but isn't a master or a teacher themselves yet. Not fully. And if disciples are learners, well, then obviously Jesus is the teacher. There is a book by Livermore Gray called Miss Tizzy. This story might be familiar to some and brand new to others. In it, there is an elderly woman named Miss Tizzy who is thought to be quite peculiar by her neighbors. But the children love her. They love her colorful house, her wild clothes. They especially love her big purple hat. But most of all, they love the attention that she pays to each and every one of them. Each day of the week, she invites the children for a special activity. On Mondays, she bakes cookies with the children, and she even lets them lick the bowl. On Tuesdays, They make puppets, and Miss Tizzy watches each play with rapt attention, laughing and clapping at all of the right parts. 
On Wednesdays, she leads the children on a parade through the town filled with joyful noises of homemade instruments and Miss Tizzy's very own bagpipes. She has a small silver penny whistle that she allows each child an even amount of time to play. On Thursdays, Miss Tizzy gave the children paper and crayons and they made cards and beautiful pictures and they delivered them to all the people all over town who had stopped smiling and were too tired to leave their homes. On Fridays, Miss Tizzy provided costumes for the children to play so they could play dress up and each child was able to wear a different hat. Miss Tizzy then served them pink lemonade and her finest china tea set. On Saturdays, Miss Tizzy put on roller skates and the children joined her, forming a train as they skated around town. And they would make train noises and Miss Tizzy didn't care whether or not they were too loud. On Sundays, Miss Tizzy and the children would stretch out in her backyard, look around them, and she would teach them to sing church songs. And her singing was a little off key, but the children loved it. Each refrain after describing this day would end with, the children loved it. Eventually, Miss Tizzy got sick and was not able to play with the children of her neighborhood. They were sad, but then they had an idea. And for the next week, they followed the example that Miss Tizzy had set for them. They baked cookies. They performed a puppet show for her outside her window. They quietly played music for her outside on their homemade instruments. They drew beautiful pictures and placed them in her mailbox. They put funny hats on and left a tea tray with pink lemonade outside of Miss Tizzy's door. They purchased her a brand new pair of purple roller skates to match her purple hat for when she was better. And on Sunday, under the moon, they sat outside Miss Tizzy's window and sang to her all of the songs that they could remember her that she had taught them. And Miss Tizzy loved it. I love this story for many reasons. Miss Tizzy loves the children dearly in this story and engages with them in ways that they had rarely been engaged with by other adults. Miss Tizzy also models actions and activities with the children. She shows them how to make music, how to have fun, how to be kind. She's modeling how to love. And when Miss Tizzy is unable to join them, the children take everything that they have learned from her and just begin to do it themselves. Jesus is our Miss Tizzy. Jesus is modeling for us what the ministry of God looks like. He's showing us what the kingdom of God, present on earth now, looks like. Jesus saw the work that needed to be done around him, preaching and healing, and he takes compassion on the people he's teaching and preaching to. And he sent out his disciples to help him with this task, to share the good news, to cast out demons, to heal, just as he had been doing. And Jesus knows that this task is not easy, but he has equipped us as best as he can. He has modeled how ministry looks, healing, preaching, uplifting the poor, working with those on the margins, and often that's met with contempt from those who do not understand or those in power. When we live into the radical welcome and radical compassion that Jesus has for all people, we might find ourselves at odds with the people we care about. When we speak out against racial injustice, we might lose a friend. I did. When we stand up for LGBTQIA plus siblings, we, find that, we might find that someone in our family vehemently disagrees with us, and there is now a simmering tension at every single family gathering. And yet, in the midst of this tension, when we, when we long for peace, we are met with the sword. We want it to be simple, but siding with the marginalized and the oppressed almost never is. Jesus' time on earth was a challenge to worldly power. 
a disruption and a call for the people who learn from him, his disciples, to keep following him and the gospel, and to be prepared that there will be conflict when challenging an oppressive authority. Jesus did not bring peace because first he had to flip tables and bring the sword. He had to challenge those in power, and that is almost never peaceful. And it's uncomfortable. Allyship does not end with a specific month. Helping those who face injustice is not tied to a particular day. Advocating for those that we care about does not just end when we feel like it should. It is an ongoing endeavor. And in the midst of this conflict and tension, in the face of the sword, we can take comfort in the path that Jesus has set before us. It's not necessarily easy. It's definitely not simple. But we can follow in the actions of Jesus each and every day as the children followed Miss Tizzy. God has never promised that this is easy, but God has also promised that we are never abandoned. Every single hair on our head is accounted for and known. And we can walk forward trusting in God's abundant compassion and love, even when it's not always full of peace. Amen. Would you please rise and body or in spirit as we sing the hymn of the day, number 781, Children of the Heavenly Father, found on page 8 of the bulletin. our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. You entice your church to speak truth that challenges false notions of peace. Prevail upon us with the good news of Christ's death and resurrection, that we are compelled to share the gospel with all the world. God, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Under your watch, not even a sparrow goes unnoticed. Safeguard plant and animal habitats threatened by melting glaciers, rising oceans, and receding coastlines. Amplify the voices of those calling for responsible stewardship of the Earth's resources. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our world is enduring violence and destruction. Rescue your people in nations experiencing conflict or crisis. Thwart the efforts of those who sow chaos and terror and guide those working to bring about peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have counted even the hairs of our heads. Reassure anyone experiencing poverty, homelessness, unemployment, or exploitation that every life has value. Look favorably upon all who struggle. Answer us, for your steadfast love is good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even when we experience rejection, your love invites us to new life. Lift up anyone who feels shunned or excluded on account of their gender, race, sexual orientation, gender identity, national origin, or any other human distinction. Make your people one. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All who have died with Christ also live with him. We give thanks for Philip Melanchthon and all the saints whose faithful confession inspired our own discipleship and raise us with them to eternal life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace be with you, Marilyn. Say it's clock Oh, that died. It's six and three. Uh, it's good. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace with you. Thank you for reading. <laughs> Peace with you. 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 It's always the rush, but Pastor Justin's never here, when I, when, and I always forget that I have to do the offering spiel. As we prepare to receive this morning's offering, we thank you for all the ways in which you financially partner with us here at United in Christ. As the offering plates go around, you can place your envelope in them, or if you choose to donate through Tidely, you can scan the QR code found in the bulletin or in the insert in the pew, and then you can also then place the insert in the offering plate as they go around. However you choose to share your finances with us, we thank you. Short and sweet. Two, five.
would you please rise and body, our and spirit? creation. You have given us life, love, compassion, and hope. We offer the gifts of our very beings to your holy calling. Strengthen us through these gifts to be the arms of mercy and justice for the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for you sent your child to be the light and life for the world. Through him you showed us how to love and to be loved how to enact justice and pray for peace. And so, with the glorious company of the saints, with the earth and sea and stars, with the choirs of angels and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. and merciful God. In the intersection of the waters above and the waters below, you created life out of the void. We thank you for the gift of creation. You sent the prophets to warn to love, not hate, and guide us to your faithfulness and your promises. We thank you for the promise to love. In the intersection of the divine and humanity, you made us whole through Jesus Christ. We, we thank, thank you for, for the, the gift of Christ. Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this holy sustenance, we are made new creatures in the covenant of your Son, Jesus Christ. Together we remember his life, death, and resurrection in this meal, and await a new and unending life in you, Come, Lord Jesus, please send your spirit to this place, to this meal, and to your church. May her life-giving wisdom be upon us now, renewed and nourished in your holy promises to be creators of justice, wholeness, and freedom. Come, Holy Spirit, with the birds of the air and the fish in the sea, with the flora and the fauna, with the saints of all time and space, we praise you always, O God. Blessed Trinity, to the very end of the age. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come and eat what is good.
May the nourishment of the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ give you renewed strength and life. Amen. Amen. you, God of mercy and love. We thank you for the nourishment that sustains our living spirits. We ask that you guide us and bless us on our journey of, for peace, justice, and wholeness for all. In the sacred name of the Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Amen. May the God of creation bless and claim you. May the Savior give you peace and wholeness, and may the Spirit guide you and lead you to mercy and justice. Amen. Amen. We now sing our closing hymn, number 796, How Firm a Foundation, found on page 16 of the bulletin. justice of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.